A few weeks ago, a friend of mine told me he was starting a career as a paranormal investigator. Is that a career? Anyway, he wanted some tech that would record environmental readings, air quality, temperature, that kind of thing. He also mentioned that at some point he wanted to get a thermal camera, but that they can be kind of expensive. I told him not to worry, I could whip up something that would do both and would look so good doing it that even the ghosts couldn't resist checking it out. We can edit that part out, right? This is what I came up with. A one-of-a-kind ghost sensor. We have environmental sensors with temperature, air quality, humidity, and pressure. A thermal camera with some LEDs that light up when it senses human temperature or paranormal activity that's the same temperature as a human. I'm gonna give a full rundown of the components inside here and how it all came together. But before we get there and I tell you why it is the way it is, we need some background. I'm your average maker. I don't have a degree in engineering. I didn't even take shop in school. I just like to make things. I like to figure out how things work and learn new skills. And I also have that voice inside my head that goes, I think I could make that. Before this project, I had never made anything with electronics, let alone design, build, and program a fully functional device that someone was going to use in their new career. My extensive experience in electronics involved a breadboard, a microcontroller, and a blinking LED. Hey look, it blinks! But I'm always looking for a challenge, and what could go wrong? Okay, things can go wrong, but more about that rat's nest later. I started out with sourcing the components. My friend had a Raspberry Pi Zero lying around, which is honestly probably more than I needed for this, but he had it lying around, so I used that for the main controller. Pretty much everything else is from Adafruit. They're not sponsoring this video, but they have a lot of great components that tend to work pretty well together. So if you haven't, you should check them out. I'll link to everything in the description below that I used in this project, and also a link to the project page where I give a more in-depth explanation on the assembly and code. The basics are this. A BME 680 sensor, which measures temperature, humidity, pressure, and volatile organic compounds in the air. Basically, air quality. One of the benefits of using Adafruit sensors is that most come with these Stemma QT connectors, which means you can just plug in these neat little wires, no soldering required. Which, for someone who doesn't own a soldering iron, and for that matter doesn't know how to solder, is a lifesaver. Or in this case, a ghost saver? Ghost buster? Had to work that in somehow. An AMG 8833IR thermal camera. This is a thermal camera with an 8x8 array of thermal sensors, which isn't great resolution, but with some fancy math, which I'll talk about later on, it works for this purpose. I also needed displays for each of these. I used a little 128 by 32 pixel OLED for the environment sensor and a 1.44 inch LCD display for the thermal camera. Now, like I mentioned before, I don't know how to solder, but putting this rat's nest of wires together was so messy that honestly, going out, buying a soldering iron and learning how to solder would probably have been easier. But maybe this will help someone who doesn't have access to a soldering iron know that it can be done. These Stemma QT connectors are super useful, but I didn't have a way to connect them to the Raspberry Pi, given that the QT to female wires were out of stock. But with a bit of electrical tape and pliers, I was able to solve that. One of the really nice things about these sensors is that they all work on I2C, which Wikipedia says is a synchronous, multi-controller, multi-target, packet-switched, single-ended, serial communication bus invented in 1982 by Philips Semiconductors. To be honest, I don't really know what any of that means. But what I do know is this. It allows a controller, like this Pi, to talk to these devices, like this sensor and display, over the same two wires. Magic. I did have some trouble getting the Raspberry Pi to recognize the OLED at first, but that turned out to just be a bad connection of my breadboard. But once I had hardwired everything, or at least as hardwired as it can be without being soldered, it worked perfectly. I wanted some LEDs because who doesn't love blinking lights? And hey, that's like the one thing I knew about electronics before this. I also wanted the LEDs to have a purpose, so I wired one up to the 3.3 volt output so that when the Raspberry Pi got power, it would light up. And I programmed the next one to light up as soon as the Raspberry Pi was done booting, because it takes some time to boot. By the way, if anyone has tips on improving boot speeds, let me know. It can be a pain to wait 30 seconds while this boots up. A 
If I was to make this again, I'd use a microcontroller so that boot time wouldn't be an issue. The other four LEDs light up based on the average temperature from the thermal camera. Basically, a confidence scale of there being a, a human, or ghost, in the frame. The code for this is all written in Python, and it's pretty straightforward. The environment code just takes the raw values from the sensor and spits a formatted version out to the OLED display. The thermal camera code is a bit more complicated, as it interpolates this 8x8 grid from the sensor into a much larger grid so that it appears like it has better resolution than it actually does. Adafruit has a pretty good tutorial to this, which I'll link down below. One thing I found to be tricky is that that tutorial uses Pygame, which I couldn't quite get to work on this Raspberry Pi. So I used the Python imaging library instead. But again, more details about that code are in the project document in the description. And with that, it was time to move on to the case. I wanted something industrial, something with substance that felt like a piece of equipment that had been used. I wanted something between Ghostbusters and Alien. I'd done some 3D modeling before, but this is easily the most complicated project I've done from scratch. I designed the 3D case in Onshape. Again, not a sponsor, but their free license is awesome, and you should definitely check it out. My basic process was measuring and mocking up all the components so that the cutouts and screw holes would line up correctly. I then mocked up a case and used the components to shape the supports and cutouts of the screens. I added this little door, which will be attached with magnets so that you can have easy access to the SD card of the Raspberry Pi without unscrewing the faceplate. I exported this to the 3D printer and then waited for 30 hours. Next came painting and finishing. This was my first time painting a 3D printed object. And I definitely learned a lot in the process. I'm going to put up another video later explaining that in more detail because I found myself asking a lot of questions and not really finding the answers that I wanted in other tutorials. Things like, how many layers can you do before curing? How long do you need to wait to sand in between each layer? How long should you let things dry before switching paint color? Basically, there's a lot I won't cover in this video, but you can check out the other one when I post that later on. The basics are this. I painted this outside grip in this flexible rubber spray called Flex Seal which gives it this really nice grippy feel that you would get from an actual grip. The top and bottom each got a few coats of this hammered chrome, which helps to hide some of the layer lines and add a new texture. And then they each got covered in a few coats of this yellow. I went back and scraped off some of the yellow, which gave it more of a weathered and used look, and then went over everything with a black acrylic, a watered down black acrylic for some more weathering. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out for a first time painting a 3D print. Lastly, I assembled everything in the case with some M2 screws. I made the screw holes a little tight when I mocked it up in the 3D design, but with some elbow grease, I was able to get them in. Again, the wiring is an absolute mess, but it works. After putting it all together, I realized that it probably would have been way easier to mount everything to this face plate and have a removable back plate instead of making all the supports so that the components were flush to the underside of the faceplate. But I'm pretty proud of myself for getting the tolerances spot on. So there you have it, a bona fide ghost sensor. Although now that I think about it, ghosts don't have bones. So I guess it's an ectoplasmified ghost sensor. Yeah, let's go with that. It's powered by an external source like this battery pack because that's just easier and it keeps the cost down. You can plug it in using these ports in the bottom here. Again, it takes a while to boot, but once it does, you can see this second red LED light come on, the environment sensor, and its output here. This also gets recorded to a CSV file every 30 seconds. And over here we have the thermal camera and the green LEDs which indicate a human temperature. This basically just takes the average of the temperature of the thermal camera. So yeah, go sensor. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about this project. I had a lot of fun putting it together and definitely learned a lot in the process. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd have done differently. Also, subscribe if you'd like to see more projects like this one in the future. I just finished watching Andor, 
and I really enjoyed the analog feel of a lot of the tech and interior design. And so I've got some fun projects coming up in the future related to that. So stay tuned. With that, I'm Forrest, your average maker. Thanks for watching.